I see 3,000 souls surviving on a planet determined to freeze all life in ice. All his movies touch on this idea of class and like the haves and the have nots. Mm -hmm. And I think he does it in such a disarming way as well. Just like a, he, it's like so dark, but also so human and like funny and awkward. And I, I think that I love all of those things in a, in a movie and, and he does it so well. I love his films, but I could never speak just to anything that he's trying to do or getting at or anything. I would never. But yeah, I really like his films. I find all, all of the ones I've seen to be so like beautiful, also in very different ways too, which I find really impressive. Like they all, they have, they're all like gorgeous to look at, but they don't look the same. Work, honor, and order. Each of us in our place. Obviously, the concept of this train and post-apocalyptic world um, and that no one can get off the train and that you explore all these people's lives and how they survive, I mean, that was very um, juicy. It's very juicy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to I wanna know more. I want to be in that world. Um, I also uh, felt like it's an, it's an action story as well so it was like I knew that it was going to be physical and be um it's you know, it's thrilling it was the exploration of class for me I think the the film which I loved was also like just left me wanting to know more about mm -hmm. all of because it had it, by virtue of being a film sort of had to be this linear story we there was only time to be introduced to the rest of the train through the the eyes of the tale moving forward but um, the exciting thing about the show is to get to like bounce around and in and out of class and not have it happen linearly and um, and so I think we get to sort of understand the world of the train a lot more and that that was really exciting to me. Yeah, it was a for me it was a really brilliant script that I first read that uh, was unlike most of anything that I had read. Um, uh, that initially got me on board and yes that's gone through lots of changes and we've gone through lots of changes but it's um, ultimately that story that hooked me in and then um, it was a great experience as you know as soon as we started it was fantastic and, and it's just getting better and better I think. What is it you see when you look at this train? I see a fortress to class. I see a balance of need and speed Greed. You meet Bastille um, uh, in the beginning of uh, season one. She's she's a brakeman. She's very much a part of the machine of Snowpiercer and Wilford's uh, law and order. She's sort of a sheep. She does what she's told um, with not a lot of um, compassion, maybe, for humanity. <laughs> um, and then uh, she meets uh, Andre Layton and life will never be the same. <laughs> it's a love story about <laughs> Till and Layden. Yeah. <laughs> it pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Just for us, but like, <laughs> and you might not see that part of the show. <laughs> like. <laughs> Andre Layton, when we we meet him, is is in the he's he's in the tale, um, which is the sort of stowaway class. We all sort of fought our way onto this train so as to not die in the freeze, um, and uh, but has has been locked back there since we left and is and uh, is you know a revolutionary back there sort of part of a plan to figure out a way to make life better for the tail but the only way they get information about things happening up train is by folks who have been pulled up to work and the little bits of information that get brought back so they're sort of trying to piece the thing together, trying to figure out some way to sort of affect change of their own situation. He happened to be a homicide detective before the freeze and all of a sudden the train needs his skill set. And so um, all of a sudden he is granted all of this access. If there's an idea of traveling up train, and all it needs is a spark. I play Ruth. Um, I work with Jennifer Connelly's char character, Melanie, and Ruth is a big fan of Mr. Wilford. She's a real zealot. She really believes in him and is really grateful to him and acknowledges the fact that we're all alive only because of him. You know, it, we're the only people that managed to survive this, and that, that's a pretty amazing thing, and everybody should be grateful.
<laughs> that's kind of what she thinks. And uh, she, the, the, the train that we're on when we start the story, um, they're seven years in and things have been going okay. You know, we've all survived. When there's been problems, we've still survived. We're still here. We're still doing it every day. But that only works if people follow the rules. We just had Graham in here, and he was mentioning that he had a kind of, when he came on board, had to talk to some of you and be like, well, we're, we're kind of going to go a different direction with your character. Did that happen to any of you? Yeah. To me, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, totally different yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Completely different person. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. so she wasn't as much of a stickler for rules before. She, I wasn't that, that like, person. I was somebody no. else's mother in a different wow. class. Totally different. Like I worked in the nail shop. I was a manicurist. Oh wow. Totally okay. different. Yeah, yeah, and had an adult <laughs> child. Yeah, um, very different. TV is sort of this fascinating dialogue between a lot of people, but mm-hmm. there's this there's this particular one between actors and writers' room where, you know. The, they a, a script comes to us and then we start doing things to interpret it on set and then those dailies go back to them and maybe there are choices we made that nobody in there was thinking of mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden that's mm-hmm. canon for this character mm-hmm. now they have that to draw from but maybe they'll take that and extrapolate some whole other mm-hmm. thing out of it that wasn't part of what any of us were thinking mm-hmm. and it's like oh well now that's canon for this character too mm-hmm. and so I, I kind of love that about mm-hmm. television it's a pretty cool fact about television, actually, isn't yeah. it? You don't really get it in other things Anything at all, else. that it's yeah. morphing all the time and changing mm-hmm. all the time. And really what you're doing and what they're seeing in the dailies is affecting what they decide to to then write moving forward. Snowpiercer's an arc. And you'll be you'll ride out this hardship and I'll live the ice. It's beautiful. In my mind, there's maybe this giant soundstage, and then there's all these tiny little train car sets that you're just moving to every day. Is that kind of what it was? Kind of. Yeah. 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 Except four. the train car sets are like pretty massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and there's yeah. four yeah. studios. And there's four, mm-hmm. yeah, yes. four stages. Four stages. And, four stages. and then when you're in a train car that needs to like shake for a scene, is that rigged and you're just on a trembling car? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And there's it is some is human slaves outside jiggling it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's not mechanical, they're, they're uh, doing it by hand. Yeah, it's like big burly guys on a seesaw mm-hmm. like could jump in my <laughs> <forth. laughs> you know you'll do more takes because there was not enough shake or too yep. much shake you know like <laughs> and you're like damn you seesaw guys why didn't you get yeah, yeah, yeah. stop playing around out there yeah. <laughs> I think I can guess what your favorite trend car is oh, if yeah. you give me a second okay like I'm gonna shut my eyes so you can read my mind because do you want to mouth it while I say it all right ready my favorite trend car is the noodle bar did she do oh, it? I mouthed yeah. it. Oh, okay. That was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> um, For obvious reasons. I also yeah. really like where I work and like mm-hmm. live, like the Breaksman Garrison, I think is I really like, like a really Garrison. good... Um, <laughs> the Breaksman Garrison is this incredibly simple set that's basically just like a bunch of lockers and a, and a jail cell. but With a toilet. <laughs> with a toilet in the middle of it. <laughs> and bunk beds. Uh, but like it keeps revealing itself to you mm-hmm. every time we shoot in that set, there's something. I was just saying More the last... Toilets. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the last time I shot in there, there was this manual, like a train operating manual with hundreds of pages of actual, someone in the art department made a real train manual for this where like the whole thing was filled in. I was flipping through it being like, this wow. is so real. Who did this? This will never be seen. No, literally nobody will ever see this. But I also love it when like you, as an actor, you know, you have the scene and there's no one saying like, open the cupboard door mm-hmm. or like the closet door, but you do. And you're like, it's, it's a fully, fu- yeah. it's yeah, fully, you find Someone you know, decorated their locker with like a, yeah. you know, that it's, and it's mm-hmm. totally within, it's amazing. 